Uh, good, mo uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, hope you bear with me. I have a bit of a cold. Um, I'm trying to do, uh, say, a clear presentation uh, within the allocated time. Uh, certainly, uh, materials, it's a very uh, basic element and what is uh, everyday commodity and certainly also what we're putting up in space. Um, and uh, I would concentrate basically on the engineering, say, uh, say use of materials, although uh, there is also the microgravity aspects uh, where we're trying to develop uh, new materials or trying to understand the behavior of materials uh, by experimenting in orbit. This is uh, one side which I will not be covering. Um, uh, the, the, say the um, materials, when uh, we as, uh, say, engineers, we think of uh, normally is building up, building up spacecraft, uh, building up equipment. However, the, the, in more recent times, uh, materials themselves become an enabling element, uh, certainly in the area of optics, optoelectronics, and the use, as we might see some of the other presentations here today, and there was one presentation by Mr. Kerler, who will be addressing uh, micro nano sort of uh, developments. This is very much in the heart of materials, but that's a different angle. Uh, certainly for me, uh, being in, in engineering many years, we're talking numbers uh, with a lot of, ten, a lot of zeros, uh, say, behind the point, which is not, uh, say, uh, the, the uh, kind of engineering I grew up to be in. I will try to give an overview of um, what sort of applications we're dealing, and I hope uh, this will be in the spirit of the presentation here. And uh, I want to thank very much the organizers giving me this opportunity. Uh, the links here in the UK, of course, these are, uh, um, the say, made up uh, by 17 countries, uh, UK being a, a major uh, founding uh, member of ESA, and uh, with respect to the mandatory programs, uh, one of the major countries with France and Germany and Italy. Uh, our connections uh, at this point in time with NPL looking after quality, looking after measurements has been a strong one. So it's been an honor for me to come here and try to share with you some of the things we're doing. Uh, just to mention, uh, ESA has a number of centers. Perhaps some of you know what it is about. I would just try to make it short. Uh, I'm located in the, in the Netherlands, where the, the technical center by the name of ESTEC uh, is located, and is really where is the brain work of ESA, I would like to think has been done, uh, where the programs have been developed and then dished out to industry. For, for, you, for, for you who don't exactly know what ESA is about, uh, we collect monies from the 17 member states, and the principle is that 80% of it goes out from ESA back to industries in uh, the appropriate portion in the various member states which are contributing to ESA. And uh, the planning of the new programs and execution of the programs is done out of ESTEC, uh, where we have the project teams of Earth Observation, Science, Telecoms, um, and in, in the future now we've been putting the navigation team. Uh, I think it's fair to mention that um, uh, a lot of the materials used in space uh, space, although being an exciting field, uh, it, it's really a minority. And even if you compare it within aerospace, it is a minority uh, level of activities. Um, so we're trying to use materials, of course, which have been used for other disciplines. Having said that, uh, whether the dimensions, I mean, if one uh, looking into satellites, the dimension of a satellite and an aeroplane, thickness of the uh, uh, over satellite, over, 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 say, jet uh, liner, certainly different dimensions. Nevertheless, uh, people were using aluminum uh, for a long time till composites came up. So there are a lot of, uh, say, uh, common sense use of materials. However, what we have a difference is that the environment we have uh, when we're in orbit, first of all, there's vacuum. If you're orbiting around the Earth, um, you, you do have day-night effects, the thermal cycling, uh, to mention a few of the parameters. Uh, typical excursion, if you have an antenna dish, uh, ex temperature excursion minus uh, um, 125 to plus 125, so the typical excursions. And of course, if one is using uh, rudimentary materials, everyday use type of materials, we figure out in no time uh, the, the materials would pack in. However, that uh, also, uh, say, sitting on a launcher, the vibrations uh, one has to experience 
um, uh, whether the materials are uh, for structural purposes or part of sensitive uh, instruments, uh, certainly one has to cover a quite severe environment. Now, when we're talking up uh, of what sort of environment, I think uh, uh, some of the uh, areas manifested, we could have uh, peculiar effects. In early days of the shuttle, people were figuring out what was happening to carbon-carbon type of materials and discovered monotonic uh, oxygen, uh, which is not something readily found on ground, uh, was really eating away the materials. Where there was some appropriate coating, it could be taken care of, but there was an unknown type of effect at the time. Other things we're looking at is the, uh, um, say, the, the radiation. Certainly radiation uh, is having a lot of effects apart from uh, weakening materials. It certainly packs in the electronics. And um, say more recent challenges in that field is how to design uh, radiation hard parts, not only by shielding them, but actually designing parts to take care of, uh, of radiation. Uh, the, here are just two pictures of uh, one launcher, which, um, uh, let to say, Ariane 5, now we've been having 23, 23 flights in a row, uh, successful flights. Uh, satellites also, uh, not all of them are large, and the, uh, the, the, the smaller launcher, which has been built up mainly uh, by the Italian, uh, say, uh, uh, by the Italians, uh, Vega, Hopefully that was going to be taking place in about a year from a year and a half from now. A lot of the materials here are basic materials, uh, aluminum and, uh, and, and say, uh, and composites. However, again, there you're talking the dimensions, you're talking the design, uh, you're noting connection between the tanks and the uh, main loading carrying parts. So uh, a, a, a lot of, in, uh, say, important issues to be addressed, and uh, some of them I will be catching in, uh, through the presentation. Um, ju just to uh, mention a few things um, where one could be using, uh, say, uh, more uh, classical materials, however, is how it's been used. And uh, one element which uh, certainly increasingly in orbit, there's a lot of debris, and if you want to protect the satellites, but even more so, if you've got to have astronauts, you want to protect uh, human life. And here is just, uh, uh, um, say, a bumper shield in front of the Columbus uh, module which was brought uh, uh, before Christmas up in orbit. Um, the, uh, the aspect is, say, if this is the, 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 the wall of Columbus itself, there is a thin, a thin layer in front where the, its purpose is really to, to break up a debris uh, particle. There is a Kevlar, which is, the intention is to slow down and, and arrest a cloud which is generated from the first, uh, say, uh, um, uh, shield. And then the idea is if there would be any part finding its say on the main wall by that time would have been in a benign environment. Uh, we are talking of, of uh, high speeds, talking of uh, some things of the order 18 kilometers per second. Some of you are known on ballistics. The highest gun you can shoot is probably around 10 kilometers a second. So you're talking here double the speeds of a bullet. Uh, a peculiar effect is as you break the, the front part, the cloud attaching, say, coming in the second one, the effect is in the front, you see hardly any effect. At its back, you see it's in a sort of in a boiling state due to the temperature as due impact. Uh, things we've done in the past in Comet Haley, uh, there was a shield at the back of Comet Haley. Some of you remember um, back, I think it was in 1986, where there was an encounter with Comet Haley. We had uh, innovative, say, shield at the back the estimates at the time is we were trying to stop particles in the form of glass at over 70 kilometers a second. Now, we're not exactly sure exactly what happened when it went through Comet Haley. The only thing is it did go through the belts of Comet Haley and the cameras were still functioning. So there was some truth in the design that we put in. Um, just some of the things to mention, because really we're talking quite unconventional designs. The, uh, the, the, the Gocha, mission which is lined up uh, hopefully to be launched later this year is to map the um, say the uh, elo electrodynamic uh, um, uh, field around the earth in a very highly accurate uh, state so there's going to be a breakthrough there's people uh, when they look at the earth it looks like a uniform ball in fact it's a, a non-uniform potato and also the electrodynamic uh, say uh, 